Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are gonna go through the, I wanna think 10 books I read in September. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. 10. Easy number, this shouldn't be too long, should be pretty quick. <laughs> saw my TBR video then you know I play my TBR board game to pick my picks every month. I have a couple hopefuls in addition to the ones I picked out in the game and I'm going to talk about those at the end of the video too. But let's go ahead and get into the books I read last month. I read an advanced copy of Wildfire and Icebreaker was literally one of my favorite rom-coms I read. So I love this. I read this as follows well Russ, one of the other guys on the hockey team from the first book, and Aurora, a character I don't think we met in the first book. If we did, I totally missed it. Russ has like a one night stand and they are, they kind of miscommunicate on the scale of like, oh no, I don't think she left and he wanted me to leave and they figure it out really quickly. Cause I was like, is this whole book gonna be the miscommunication trope? Cause if it is, I'm gonna die. But it's not so don't worry about it. They end up both working at the same summer camp. So it doesn't really give you like fall vibes if that's what you're looking for, but it was really fun. And if you're one of those people that doesn't like kids in books, there were not like the kids at the camp were not like a huge part of the book. There are puppies, but I gave this five stars. I loved this. This was so good. I read Rule of the Aurora King, which is the sequel to Trial of the Sun Queen. These books are not, it's an incomplete series. Currently Rule of the Aurora King is the most recent one out. And these are like very bachelor, the selection kind of vibe but it's an adult version and it's with Faye, which I was loving. There were some things that I definitely saw coming. Some stuff was a little more, I don't wanna say unpredictable, but there was definitely parts that I wasn't expecting some twists. I'm really looking forward to the third book, but this was really great. If you're looking for like a fun fey fantasy romance book, I and you haven't picked these up, you know, they've got trials there. I don't want to say they're like Hunger Games like, but there's definitely like intense trials and competitions and not just like a beauty pageant. There's people dying in this version of The Bachelor, basically. So I give this four and a half stars, I think. I also read Spells for Forgetting. This is the perfect fall book. It is set on this like island where everybody that lives on the island is kind of like, ooh, this is like a magical place. The island has vibes. I don't know. This one, like forever ago, a girl died and the guy who they all thought was like the reason she died left and now he's come back because he's burying his mom. And there's like all this like mystery about it. Like, did he kill the girl? How did the girl die? All this stuff. So it's kind of like a mystery. And like, even though it's set on an island, it gives very much like spooky fall vibes. They're talking about like the leaves changing and the birds and everything. It's magical realism, not fantasy and definitely mystery thriller. This is one of my favorite books I've read this year. And you have, if you have haven't read it you really should pick it up because it's like I don't know how to how else to describe it but it's like a cozy mystery but not a cozy mystery do you know what I mean like <laughs> it's not a thriller but you are like how did this happen what happened to the girl you have a lot of questions but five stars obsessed I read The Kiss Curse I've had this book literally since it came out the author is from where I used to live she had these fun book release parties so I love Erin Sterling she's so nice in real life huge fan I finally read this I'm mad that I didn't read this sooner I like this one better than the X-Hex it's so cute it follows not Reese Wells I don't know why I was stuck on Reese from the first book but this follows Wells and Gwen and they have like these little rival magic shops going on in Graves Glen and it was so cute and I really liked it and you know it's just a fun like easy fall read like the witchy vibes are there the Halloween spooky vibes are there I, I recommend it I gave this five stars because I enjoyed it so much but I know these aren't like everybody's favorite I also read The Wishing Game and I thought I was going to love this book this is probably one of my books that's like disappointed me I guess this year this book totally gives Charlie and the Chocolate Factory vibes let me just go ahead and say that but this follows this girl she's 26 she's like a student teacher essentially and she really wants to adopt this nine-year-old boy and they read these books called the clock clock island the clock island series and the author just like suddenly just stopped writing them six years ago and like nobody knows why the girl shows the little boy that's in foster care these books and she really wants to adopt him but like doesn't have the finances to do so this author just randomly one day like, basically announces that he's written another book but there's only one copy and he's inviting a couple people to the island if they know the answer to this riddle and she's one of the people My my whole thing is, this doesn't spoil anything, but when she's 13, she meets this guy and I don't remember how much older than her he is, but he's definitely like at least 20, if not older than that. That's like, she clearly has like romantic interest in him now that she's 26. And there was just something about that that weirded me out. Like, I know they're both adults now, but the fact that he knew her when she was 13 bothered me. And I don't feel like it should have, but it, it, it did. And so I gave this three and a half. I really, honestly, really liked 
the whole like story and the riddles and everything. But I could not get past that point. Like that was just weird to me. Like I thought about it and I thought about it and I tried to not think about it and I tried to just pretend like I didn't know. <laughs> That didn't work either. So three and a half. I feel like if that wouldn't bother you, you'd probably really enjoy this, but it's definitely like magical realism. Very Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, like feels very inspired by Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I read The Last Word. This book really took me by surprise. I was not thinking I was really going to like it or that I was going to be, I don't want to say as scared as I was. <laughs> but I was nervous. I thought I figured out who was who and then I didn't and then it got me again. So props to Taylor Adams. This follows a woman who's like secluded herself on this beach cabin thing. She's basically house sitting. She one stars a book on Amazon and then some really creepy stuff starts happening and she's pretty sure it's the author that's like come to like kill her because she's one starred his horror book that was like terrible. So you know not great for us book reviewers out here. I did not see what was happening coming at any point. I thought I did. I didn't. I gave this four and a half stars. I definitely recommend it. Great for spooky season. It Sure was spooky to me. Winter's Captive and Spring's Rising, which are the first two books in the Lachlan Treaty series, not Lachlan Feuds. I downloaded these as an audiobook because you can get all four books in the series for one Audible credit. And so I was like, oh, great, four books for the price of one. Love that. And then I was like, I don't think these are the books that I saw people talking about. And then I was worried I had downloaded like the second series, like the series that followed another series. Turns out I downloaded the first series, and a lot of people are now realizing that they downloaded the second series and listened to the second series before the first one. So I feel like I, props to me. I really like these. This is where I get confused like how this is fantasy because there's no magic in this at all. Like it's just set in like medieval times. You know, like is the villain gonna have magic? Like I just don't know. This is enemies to lovers in a way, I guess. It's marketed as enemies to lovers. I don't know if I would for sure say that that's how I felt about it. I guess it could be. I really, really liked these. It has the one horse trope, which... I know many of us love one horse. These were really fun, very like Scottish Irish energy. You've got like a princess trying to f recover her like missing fiance, the brothers trying to recover the missing fiance, lots of interconnected romance, silly things happening. I really like these. I cannot wait to listen to the third book. I've been listening to them while I've been working on the new TBR board game and it's going well for me. They're really quick to listen to, but they're also on Kindle Unlimited. So like if I've been listening to it and then I just wanna read it on my Kindle, I've been able to do that, which I really like. So I gave both of these four and a half stars. I recommend them. I read the sequel to These Hollow Vows, These Twisted Bonds. I read These Hollow Vows when it came out. So it has been a minute since I read this and I probably should have like read a summary of These Hollow Vows because this started and I was like, how did it get here? I didn't know. But you know, I, I Googled a few things and then I felt like I knew what was happening. So that was better. This took me back to like OG book talk. Like when I first started my account, like, I mean, the Fae, the dark unseely, the bright seely courts, very much so OG book talk day energy. I really liked it. I think I gave it four stars, maybe could have been three and a half. This was, I think this is a fun little duology if you're just looking for like an easy Fae thing to read in your free time, you know? Like if you're looking for something and you're like, man, I can't find anything. I like them. They're not like the best ones I've ever read. I loved the first book. This one was okay. And then finally I read Assistant to the Villain. This is definitely like if you've seen Hannah's TikToks, like these are, this is like a quirky fantasy. This isn't meant, I don't want to say not to be taken seriously, but like you're not going to get some like heavy court politics in this. The romance I thought was pretty cute. I did really like that, but it's definitely like a funny quirky time. This girl, Evie, really needs a job. She runs into the villain and becomes his assistant. And he has like this essentially like office building of people working for him. Like he has interns, he has an HR person, all this stuff. And he's just known as the villain in this and around the area. But I really liked his character. The way this ended, I do really want to read the second one. But I feel like this is like a three and a half, four for me. It wasn't my favorite thing I've read, but it was a good time. That was everything I read in September. So some things that weren't in my TBR game that I really want to read in October. Let's look. I really want to read None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell. I've only heard cool things about this. I know it's about a podcaster and like someone's like kind of creepy on the podcast. In the end, apparently everyone feels like it's kind of Verity-esque where like you don't know what to believe, which I think sounds nuts. 
I'd really love to read Once Upon a Broken Heart. I was waiting for all three books to come out before I started this, and I know the third one I think comes out this month. So I would love to read this. Also, I have the UK cover, and I think the UK cover is so pretty of these books. All of your demise, all of our demise. I loved All of Us Villains. This book was so good to me, and so I really want to read the sequel. I can't believe I haven't read it yet, but I found it on Book Outlet for super cheap, so I'm like, I need to read this because the magic system in this one is so cool. Their magic is stored in like jewelry as spells. The very secret society of irregular witches. I feel like everyone's talking about this one. It's a very fall book. If I don't read it this fall, I probably will not read it until next fall. So I feel like I need to, you know. The Naturals, I know everyone's talking about this. I really am hesitant to start it because it's starting a new series, but I feel like right now is like the time and the font is so big. So I feel like I could just fly through these really quickly. The Seven Year Slip, I meant to read this last month, didn't get to it. I'm part way into it. I, it's going quickly for me. So I think this will be an easy one for me to read. I'd love to read the next two books in the Lachlan Treaty as well and then Unmaking of June Pharaoh which I had an arc for and didn't get to whoops those are the ones that are like kind of on my radar in addition to the six that are on my TBR from the TBR game so clearly I'm just feeling crazy ambitious this month as always thank you guys so much for watching sign up for my newsletter if you're interested in buying Shrink the Shelf if you don't know what Shrink the Shelf is the board game that I'm making that you guys are going to be able to buy that helps you build your TBR you can either use it to shrink your physical TBR or just as a fun way to pick your books each month if you're interested it's the first link in my caption but thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys here next time. Bye.